disturbing alarm clock, but with the bright light, with the bright light of my lamp, which knows when I have to wake up. And before I left the house, my floor lamp informed me about the incoming bad weather by blinking rapidly. And this is how I go to school in a regular day. And after school, I'm a teacher of a maker's club. I teach my students how to be creative and productive. We make robots, art pieces, and other kinds of projects to innovate and inspire. And after my, when my duty ends as a student and the teacher, I go to my company. I set off to my office where we develop Internet of Things products with my co-workers, which I met in an internship. I'm 18 years old, I'm a senior, I'm a teacher at my school, and I have a company. <laughs> and, and today, I would like to talk about my journey up to here. When I was in primary school, I wasn't the top kid. I was the one who learned how to read least. But I was creative. I, know, I knew how to make differences and loved to do so. I played with Legos, strategy games, participated to tournaments. And in this picture, we are at a Lego tournament that we couldn't win. But we found a very unique solution to the problem that everyone was amazed. And we were the still ones remembered after six years. My family had a huge role on my personality. My father, who is a construction engineer, self-taught himself many skills and built a real scale helicopter in our living room. Uh, we didn't have a living room for three years and it wasn't the best experience at all. And my mother, who is an English teacher, taught me how to be disciplined and hardworking. And eventually, after the primary school, I got into Robert College, which is one of the best high schools in Turkey. At Robert College, I faced a new community where people were mainly interested in music. There were people playing electric guitars, forming bands, and going on concerts. And I was there playing with Legos, programming, and um, creating little robots. So I felt a little bit left out. In order to adapt, I started playing electric guitar, formed my own band. And throughout my junior year, I thought I had everything. Lots of friends to hang out with, decent scores. I was following the crowd. Having fun was my number one priority, which then ed ended abruptly. On a rainy November night, I had a severe motorcycle accident. I stood up without the feeling of my left arm, took off my crashed helmet, and gazed at my shredded motorcycle. Amongst the feeling of shock and pain, I predominantly felt regret and enlightenment. As I asked myself, what would, I, what would have remain, remained behind me if I had just died minutes ago? And the answer nothing weighted on me heavily. I would have been only remembered for the fun times, for the parties, for the, for the loves, nothing substantial. My existence would have no meaning at all. And this revelation freed me one of the stereotypical teenage experience and made me search for something more. And I began to take a road less traveled by. I discovered new hobbies. I was fascinated by programming, creating new devices, and designing. I was enchanted by the idea of innovation, learning about new concepts, and getting better at the things that I'm curious with. With using online sources, I made a 3D printer, a quadrocopter, and lots of other devices and robots. And my best motivator was my curiosity. It was the number one force that drove me forward, which is not special to me. We are all curious. People are natural explorers. We have, most of us have instable desire to seek, to learn, and to discover. It's the way we are wired. And 99% of the species that have lived today are extinct. If the first man hadn't been curious, hadn't discovered fire, our story would have ended centuries ago by a physically stronger predator. But we were curious. I became more passionate as I learned more using online sources. It improved exponentially. And last year, when I became 18, 
my passion gave its first fruit. I co-founded my first company. On a rainy April night, again, we set off to Ankara with two of my friends, which I met in an internship. We presented our project to the Minister of Industry and won the 1,000 Turkish Lira government fund. And then we started to work. Connecting is an Internet of Things company, and its first product is a smart grid solution for houses. It's basically an intelligent plug that connects to Internet via Wi-Fi. You can control it from anywhere you like. You can schedule it, you can program it. It has built-in energy sensors that say how much energy that you consume when you consume most. And it can give standby energy when power power. And the best part is it can actually reduce your energy bill. How? Simple. I hope many of you are aware of the fact that we have dynamic energy prices right now. The energy price before 10 o'clock is 37 kurush. And after 10 o'clock, it's 11 kurush. There's three times difference. A real life scenario with our plug would be like, it's six o'clock, you put your dishes in your dishwasher, the dishwasher is plugged to our plug and it's connected to our plug, and you turn on the dishwasher, go to your living room to watch your favorite soap opera, and when you check your phone, there's a notification that says, right now, the energy price is 37 kush, but after 10 o'clock, it will be 11 kush. Would you like to wash your dishes one third of the price? If it's okay, you press yes, and put your phone away. And the plug turns off your dishwasher and turns it back again after when energy is cheaper. Right now we have 10 o'clock and before 10 o'clock. But in future, with the increased demand and the population, the energy prices are going to be more dynamic. We traveled a lot in short time. And last month, we received a $1.6 million partnership offer by a big hardware company. And I'm still 18 and even didn't finish the high school yet. And right now, we are closing the company. Yes, because of partnership conflicts that we couldn't solve. But I don't see this end, I, I see this end as a beginning of new opportunities. And I mentioned lots of technological news and robots and such, but my projects are not all about that. On a Friday evening, my Turkish teacher wanted me to um, create a poem, but this time it was not going to be on paper and created with words and a pen, but it would be a 3D printed object. Poetry does not only contain a message or a story, but it's written for hearing and for feelings. It awakens an imagery on the people. It makes us remember something, makes us a, remember a story or an event that have occurred. We feel something, it has a spirit, and therefore it can't be translated, altered, or changed. If we do so, it loses essence and spirit. And therefore, I narrated this using a 3D printed object. This object represents a poem. The physical shape that it has, its rigidity, mass, density, represents the story and the message that it wants to give. And the patterns on its sides represents the poetic elements, allusions, smileys, phrases that it has. And with all of that combined, makes, makes us feel something. And also, here's the second object which is the translated version of this poem. They translated that well that they both share the same story, same message, same poetic elements, but one is in different language and the other is in the original one. When we look at both of them, they are not the same. They don't have the same spirit, same essence. And I narrated this using two 3D printed objects. I did this project using a 3D printer and an engineering software called SolidWorks. But this is a Turkish literature project. And I believe that engineering is also a form of art. And this ideology is in our pockets right now. Once, Steve Jobs said that it's the intersection of technology and arts that make our hearts sing. I 
I told you a lot about me, that I'm 18 years old, I'm a senior, I'm a teacher at my school, and I have a company, and I learned it all by myself. And I eventually met the media and the newspapers along my way. As I saw articles about me, I cheered up, but I was also disappointed. Many of the, my accomplishments were seen as the work of a genius. A article said that I'm the Turkish Zuckerberg, and even a TV channel titled me as the Khan, the genius kid. My accomplishments and work has been overly exaggerated, I might say. I'm not a gifted person. I'm not someone different. I was never the top student or wanted to be. I'm a maker. I make stuff because I love to do so, just like playing a musical instrument. I do it for self-satisfaction. I search, I try, I fail, I continue. I took many risks and never feared of being unsuccessful. But I sometimes paid the price. But it didn't stop me. When a teacher walks into a classroom, she has two missions. One is to teach, and other is to motivate everyone to pursue the truth and the knowledge. After the motorcycle accident, I was motivated to contribute, use my time efficiently, and leave something behind. And as I said, we are all creative. It's wired in our DNA, like the first man. We all love to learn. We all love to discover. But um, sometimes we can't find a way to express it, or we limit ourselves, or don't have the courage for it. I would like to ask all of you a question. How many uses of a paper clip can you think of? You have 10 seconds. Please count it with your fingers. OK, time is up. If it's less than seven, you are limiting yourself. Why can't you make a dog kennel with paper clips? You can. I didn't say it has to be logical or it has to be effective. Just imagine. And that's where creativity comes in to push the limits. All, all the matter is to take the first step. All the resources are available online, all the tutorials. All you need is the willpower to get it. In my high school, I was not eligible to take a programming, programming lesson. They said that you don't qualify for the lessons. Your, grade, your grades are too low for that. And that didn't stop me. I went online and learned it by myself. And now I'm giving programming lessons to my students at my high school. Yes, take the first step. Find something that you love. Find something that you lose the track of time while doing so. Search it online, buy books, order a kit, ask a friend, join a community, find people like you. You will like it more as you go. It, learning about new concepts is an adventure, and it's a very rewarding process. And don't worry if your field is, is different from what you love. Great innovators apply ideas from other fields to their fields to make great events, like, like Steve Jobs. And yes, find something that you like. Life is too short to wait. Make something. Thank you. <laughs>